Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. James, huh? what? Fashion friendly, <laughs> flirty. What, what kind of jacket would you say that is? I like it, by the way. I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna. If you're watching the video show at home on YouTube, uh, tune in for Jesse's jacket, which I actually like. <laughs> tune in for Jesse's jacket. It's totally Jesse. It's a working girl era (laughs) do you know what i mean slash i was gonna say that actually yeah because it's a longer very murphy brown yes (laughs) yes yes i like more of a a melanie griffith yeah in a working Working girl Girl. sure sure we all do um she won an oscar for that yeah yeah is that crazy was she wearing a kitten heel in that movie bunches (laughs) many 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 kitten heels that was always a weird one, right? She won for that. Uh, not really. I mean, I, I remember that that movie but, at the time to like my mom. I, I didn't see it. Obviously, I was a kid. But like um, I remember like to moms and things like that. It was inspiring and a lot of people for women at the time. Yeah. It's just what you have to do now to win an Oscar. Yeah, but you got to you know think of, mean? of back then. And I think, you know, back then when that movie was, I want to. I want to say it was early 80s, right? Mm-hmm. Was kind of the culture no way was, to find out, but yeah. was changing in there were more divorces. There were more moms with with families and all that other stuff. And there were more moms working like double income houses starting. So I think that movie just hit at the right time. And so it was like to, it was at, more at the, the point, movie than her performance. Yeah. And at the, at, at the time it was groundbreaking, I think. So, yeah. you know, it kind of was like, all right, cool. And then. Mr. Mom came out like after, you know, a few years afterwards and it was like, oh, another woman in the workplace. Right. Another woman voting. You know? Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think that's what that's what it was. And then she what she married Antonio Banderas. Oh, yeah. Antonio Banderas. And I think they're still married, right? Banderas. No. Are they? Are they? Uh, no, no, she was she with was Don, Don Johnson, John. yeah. and she made that boring little uh, yeah, cutie pie. That's right. That boring little cutie pie Dakota. at Dakota. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Snooze festival. Snoozy cutie pie, yeah. right? Dum dum, <laughs> little dum dum, but so cute. <laughs> we saw Don Johnson in a movie last night. <laughs> we did. Whenever he pops up, by the way, <laughs> I could not. I love. I, I personally love Don Johnson. I want him. Okay, whenever he pops up to me, though, it's a comical situation. I cannot ever take him serious anymore. He's turned into this caricature, I think, of himself. And so, but here's why: so the movies that he's been popping up in is making fun of that caricature of it. Yes, and so I, you have to go there. I don't think you can flip flop back. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think he's fully character. committed. Yeah, yeah. I think, but I think he's fully committed to that now. So, but the movie that we saw him pop in. This is the crazy part. So I wanted to. I, I, fuck, I mean, we're live on air, so I, we'll talk about it now. I don't care. Um, we. I wanted to watch this movie. What was it? Brawl and Cell Block Ninety Nine. Brawl. Yeah. Not bra. Brawl. Yeah. That's what I'm saying yeah. <laughs> brawl. Did I say bra? It sounded like bra. Bra. Yeah, it was so a brawl. Brawl, brawl in uh, Cell Block 99 mm-hmm. with Vince Vaughn, who was the lead. I begrudgingly right. and, put and, it well, on. Here, here's the thing. So I really wanted to watch this movie because I was a giant fan of Bone Tomahawk. And okay. it was the same writer-director. I had heard about this movie and I'd read articles about it. And they were like, oh, man, this could be another cult favorite. Right? So when we watched it... The first like hour was super slow and weird, and I couldn't tell if it was a drama or they were trying to be serious. I couldn't tell. You went to you went to sleep because you were like, "Dude, I'm 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 agreeing on this." You were long, over it. It was a long how long movie. in before it was about, anyone even yeah. got punched. Yeah. So okay, and it's called Brawl <laughs> Cell Block Ninety Nine. So no violence whatsoever until good hour in probably. 
So I was like, dude. Good hour. And so I understand I'm good. it. I'm not even going to rag on you for, for okay. going to bed, right? Well, the last hour was incredible. It was amazing. I knew you were going to say that. But here was the I vibe of it you. was the vibe of it really of that movie was a 1970s kind of shaft type of B movie kind of a grindhouse type of movie. And I think looking back on it now, cause the last hour of that was enjoyable as shit. I loved it. Okay. Loved it at the last hour of, it, I was just like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. this is what I came for. Why did it take an hour to get to this? I think they could have shortened it down the first hour. Sure. 20 minutes of, of mm. backstory. Boom. He's mm. in the thing. And then cut down some of those long combos. Yeah. 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 I, one just, of them uh, between one of your friends. Yeah, it was Mark Lucas, who I was in stuntman with, and he was great. Sorry, Lucas, you were good, but that convo with you could have been really shortened. Ah, Lucas is awesome. It's not his fault. No, I'm just saying he's he awesome. was great, but I'm just. <laughs> I don't want to say he's my beef right either. We did a we did a movie together, and no, then you got, hung out a few times afterwards. Joy, I just yeah, I just happened to. What, it, there's very few people you work with that are just great people in real life, and you're like, oh my god, that guy's one of them for sure across the board, and he was in it. Yes, you're right. The convo could have been shortened down sure. a little bit. If you shorten that down to the first 20 and then went into that last hour, I think that movie could have been pretty big. Sure. I really do. Because I, I, I think a lot of people were like you, where they just shut it off after an hour and were like, dude, I'm, I'm done. The, when I say the violence escalates in this, oh my God. I'm talking heads getting chopped off. Uh, I mean, they started hooking Vince Vaughn up to, to this... Uh, Electric belly. It was thing. a back brace, yeah. That was. It would look like a uh, a belt that you would, you know, like oh, for deadlift lifting. with. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was all electric, electric. It was like kind of a stun gunny type of yeah, vibe. Yeah, and then you Don want to Johnson it. had the had button. the clicker, yeah. And so after that, there was just so many crazy deaths and like they they brought in like they they took How his did pregnant they wife. Leap through. All I don't know. They took his pregnant wife and they said, look, we're going to we're going to kill the baby inside of her. And the baby inside of her was like, I think, like four or five months. She was like four or five months pregnant in the movie. Mm -hmm. And they said, we're only going to remove. We have an abortionist that's going to come in and only remove the the baby's feet from inside her stomach. And then we're going to send you these feet from the fetus in prison let me just say one thing so this is the bad guy G- german or russian or something I, I I, i'm not tell. sure they never really explained eastern it. european eh, some maybe spanish i don't know s- listen i don't know but he's not he the same bad guy from ace ventura could be i think it was could be and again, white haired yes you know the, but very that was... thick accent so he's talking to him it's to me so funny so Vince Vaughn, because when I see Vince Vaughn's face talking to this guy as yeah. he's explaining this graphic thing he can't even do, right? Yeah. And we have an abortionist that can take only the leg. Correct. And Vince Vaughn is just sitting. His face to me is always comedy. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, why Vince yeah. Vaughn, I could never go follow Serious. him down a drama road. Yep. I guess uh, True Detective, I did I went along with it. I thought it was pretty bit, good. But even detective. that when I see his face not doing anything, it makes me laugh. Yeah. So, so what, what are you going to want to say? It turns into comedy or something? Yes. So at that point, I realized at the exact point you were saying, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I think this is like an homage to like the 70s Grindhouse movies. Even it, when, when they were in the car and you were like, why are they listening to all this shitty music? I was like, shitty. I was like, that's that was part of it, right? Okay. And so at the end, there you go. towards the end, um, they you know they bring out the abortionist, and it's this like young Asian man in a business suit, and like he's so upset because he didn't get to perform this to cut the feet off this thing. And I was like, oh my god, it's pretty funny. So like, I th- that whole vibe and everything they were going for was totally there. It just got to it a little late. And with that kind of stuff, I really like to be hit over the head with it. Gotcha. I don't love to be like, what is going on? So I, and I, then I have to watch it again yeah, with well, like, different eyes. You take the St. James Street James movies that I make. I do it like, so you know, opening 
two minutes. What you're getting What into. you're getting into, fake names, and I think, fake everything. Yeah, I think there was a couple things they could have done, done with that movie to take me there quicker. Yeah. I, um, look, I think if you cut 40 minutes out of that, boom, you have a, a fucking cult classic that goes on forever. But I really enjoyed the last hour of it. And I think this guy, because I loved Bone Tomahawk with, with Kurt Russell. I think this guy could be on to something. My only complaint about Bone Tomahawk was the same, that I wish it was shorter. So right. I think if he shortens it up, man, this dude could be dope. Right. Because he writes and directs this stuff, and it's like, oh, all right. Once it clicked into me, it was hilarious. Like, it was, it was really fun. Yeah, I just wanted to click in a little bit. That's it. Sooner. So that, that's what Why you're missing. Why did you point to me when you said Kurt Russell? Your boy. Oh, my, my boy. Your boy. So I'm surprised you, because you fell asleep for that movie, too. I'm surprised that was your I didn't boy. Even, I didn't even start that movie. No. No, you didn't start the fire at all. It doesn't do it for me. I can't even see you starting Avengers, this Endgame movie, even after it made $358 million and a billion dollars at the box office worldwide. That's mm-hmm. a three-hour movie. I can't even see you starting that, just based on the time code of that. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're good on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you'd have to start for that movie you'd have to start it for me in bed with the tv on what what you reckon 5 30 <laughs> sun's still up so so you know people know that you have to start a movie at a certain point yeah yeah for a for a gal like me sure sure Party, 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 party. All night long. Don't you All start you do that movie party. past nine. Yeah. It's so, got to be eight o'clock or nothing. Once you miss that window. Right. I was, I was reading up on it online because I, I haven't seen the last two I haven't seen. Right. And, and everybody knows I'm not a big superhero guy, but I've watched them because of my, my son likes to watch those movies. They're the only and things look, that they're action look, packed. Yeah, yeah, they and work. They don't swear. They're good. You can put them on, and you're like, "All right, cool." He's got all the Avengers toys and all that other stuff. So, like, I'll probably go back and watch the other one, and then go watch this one. What I won't do ever on this show, and I can promise you that, no matter if I like something or dislike a movie or whatever it is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you and ruin it. I'm not gonna give away the ending, like a lot of other assholes tend to do there was a guy on twitter he's actually a huge nfl football player his his name is Lashawn mccoy so he goes to an early screening of the avengers movie right Mm -hmm. and then goes on his twitter account and he's look he's he's been in in a pro bowl running back for years he's toward he's you know toward the down end of his career and then just tells the entire ending online people fucking raged why over the weekend do, why did he do that he's just an asshole oh cool cool, cool, cool just cool. an asshole and it was like man it's one of those things where everybody pours their heart out for how many of those goddamn things they make 11 or whatever Look, it was and they're i mean the things that nobody says i mean they do press everywhere yeah and they, everyone's yeah. tight-lipped i mean yeah. everyone um so to you have make this wrap-up movie dick, it's three yeah. hours and to have this dick the, the weird thing about it is with LaShawn McCoy, he, he's, a, he was a, he's been a pretty good football player. Mm-hmm. I, this is the only thing I'll actually remember him for. I think I saw a meme of that, which is the only reason why I know his name. Yeah. I, look, I think okay, this will be the spoiling. only thing that I remember him for because he never won a Super Bowl. So it's not like you can say, oh, man, you know, he had these record setting performances in the. Si-. No, no, he didn't. He didn't have like a sweet playoff run, so. Eh. So this is it, huh? Yeah, I, I think this is probably the only thing he'll be remembered for. That and then staging somebody at his girl to break into his girlfriend's house, kick the shit out of her, and then take all of his jewelry back. And that's a real story. From the same guy. Same guy. So. Yeah, uh, he was trending number one over the weekend. I was like, man, that doesn't make any sense for a 31-year-old running back. And then boom, right. there yeah, it boom. is. There it is. But look, I, I hope everybody out there enjoyed it. And uh, it was everything you hoped it was. Because for a movie to make that much money, clearly, I mean, it, you're looking at almost doubling the, the record. It's not yeah. even close, all the records this thing destroyed. I hope it was everything everybody wanted. By, by Twitter's reactions to it for the last you know three or four days it was mm-hmm. and everybody was stoked on it so that makes that i'm, I'm that's that makes me happy and i'm i'm uh, i'm overjoyous 
about that because there's nothing worse than when you ruin a franchise or you ruin an ending and things. Yeah. You can go back and listen to our catalog about my my raging on the ending of Seinfeld, Friends. Oh, sure. All that other stuff. Like, sure. man, just do what the fans want. Right. Um, also, Bloodline, I think it was another one. Yeah. Like, God damn it, Bloodline. That really effed, effed my B-hole. that one in, huh? Yeah. That really effed my whole entire B-hole, that, that one. That effed your whole B-hole. Yeah, it did. Wasn't stoked about the ending of Bloodline. I love, I love that show. Yeah. Waybun, Detective Waybun. You know that I can get down on a nice detective, Detective Waybun. Oh yes, I do. Um, so I, do. I, I, yeah, don't don't f it up, dude. Realize the importance and the gravity of it that it that it holds in people's heart. For sure, and, and really and go the Avengers for it. Did and they have the money to do so, and good for them. Good for them. I don't know. Look, with the Avengers. Because of the, the contracts and because of that cast and because of who's in it, you're short on time to write those scripts, mm. I, I think, in my opinion. And I think that's what happened to Star Wars, why I got so shitty, is you know you buy a, fr- a franchise for $5 billion, and then you're on a time clock because the studio's got to make their money back, um, and they're just kind of racing these things out, and then you end up with like the Han Solo movie that was right. a disaster all the way around. And I, mo- my reaction to the, the first or the last you know, two that came out where people were still pissed about those films. So I think they're spending more, they spent more time with the one that's coming out around Christmas with the Avengers. They didn't, they just kept gassing those things out and uh, everybody loved them. Yeah. So it's rare. Good for them. Um, The Russo brothers, those guys fucking do it, man. Do it. Russo brothers. The Russo brothers. I want to talk about another homeless story that somebody sent me. Uh, o- over the weekend you do love to talk about them. i i don't it's not I'm that joking. i like to so, talk about the homeless it's just it's happening more and more in a lot more places and i'm like man what's the deal like when is everybody finally going to turn the corner on this because we had share she finally was just like i'm i'm done with this i'm done with pretending that immigration and all this other bullshit is isn't affecting us the latest one that somebody sent me was the johnny rotten story and i was like what let me read more. He's been calling the cops on these homeless vagrants who have taken over his doorsteps of his posh $3 million mansion in, in, on Venice Beach. Okay. He claims that there was so much poo in the sand. Use the term poo, by the way. Of course. Um, which I, I find it a little, a little well, childish. Right. What would you think? He was, shit. Shit. Yeah. Okay. It's Johnny Rotten, you know? Yeah, but you're calling the cops. But shit. Yeah. There's shit, shit everywhere. There's shit. Right. He also said there was a bunch of needles all over the beaches and, you know, he's worried about people stepping on him and all that other shit. So he called the cops. He's been calling the cops over and over again. Mm-hmm. And he said it's, this, it's, it's a group of these young homeless men and they're uh, right around their, their 20s, like 24 who are just creating all this mischief and he can't get into his his door and all right. this other shit. Right. And I was like, man, you're the guy who wanted to rage against the establishment. Uh-huh. You were that guy. He was that guy, the poster boy for it for ever. Forever. Punk rock. Uh, every, every, a lot of people say he invented punk rock. There's nothing Some more punk rock. Say, yeah. Than taking over a rich rock star's mansion and just sleeping there and shooting up on the outside. Shooting up, shitting outside. Taking a shit in the sand. Yeah. yeah. Fuck the establishment, brother. So Except what? when it happens to you and then you're super rich. Yeah. So the comments in this article were amazing, by the way. Because it's exactly what happens to everyone in this life, I think. Pretty much. Yeah. Unless you're blind to it, like a, a, an Alyssa Milano, like blind to your own hypocrisy and shit. Sure, sure. Like an Alyssa Milano or, or Deborah Messing or mm. Barbara Streisand or whatever. His comments were, you know, uh, to, to the reporter who asked him, they said, hey, man, you built a, a living off of fuck the establishment mm. and all of this stuff and the youth movement and everything else. Like, why is it any different now with what's going on right now? And it was like, oh, because, you know, I'm a hardworking bloke and I earn my money and I earn this mansion and all this mm-hmm. other shit. 
cool, man. But all of the people you raged against in the establishment were also hardworking people who earned their money. Mm -hmm. And if you want to say that it was a bunch of trust fund kids and all this other shit, you married one. His right. wife of 35 years is a German like newspaper heiress. Mm, okay. They haven't, they've had millions of dollars for years and years and years. And I commend them. They've been married for 35 years and congratulations. I was there. So were you during that Venice revolution where it went from shitty kind of duplexes up to multi-million dollar houses and all that other stuff all along the beach yeah all, all along made the beach glass i will say this there is a difference between the punk movement and homeless kids shooting up why the um i will say they were doing something and he is right so they were in a band and they did have like a place to live and they would play you know play concerts, whatever, and party mm -hmm. super hard in yeah. certain places. But the punk movement is not uh, homelessness outside shitting everywhere and shooting up. Now, but but if, if you trade it for the 70s, right? And you, you watch that Bourdain thing with me. Right. Where that's part of the punk movement in that old town New York was living in abandoned places remember they were living in the warehouse district it was empty we people were shooting up that's true anthony bourdain went through what was that the heroin guy's house who had all mm -hmm. those heroin packages went through all of them i was like oh man i remember coming down here every i mean these these flop houses existed back in the 70s but there what the homelessness problem wasn't as bad as it was today right. but back then new york was kind of empty half of it and it was right. dangerous and dirty and it was just like it like then they, they were cleaning up the streets and there was a lot of homelessness and drug use and all that shit. Right. So they were doing it in abandoned houses and not in, in front of mansions. Because they could. Now there is no abandoned houses sure. anymore. So okay. they got to live on the sidewalks or the beach. That's fair. But and I will most say of them are the losing. Sex Pistols were doing something. They were practicing. They were playing shows. They were making albums. Totally. So they were doing something, whether they fucking flopped and were crazy and fucking you know right but but i mean look most of their stories were this of like ah we were just playing music we didn't expect anything of it you know sure i'm just saying they were doing something we so don't this know that the thing... homeless aren't doing something underground jesse okay. we don't know what they're doing so they could be building things that's the thing <laughs> is that it's so easy you know in ventura venice these places San Francisco. Well, it's warm. The climate has the a lot to do with it. The climate is great. There's, you know, it's liberal. So there is a lot of people that will do things for you, give you money. Yeah. You and, know, so. And they're all sanctuary cities. And so you can live there. they don't want to offend anyone. So they're very much like, you know, it's your area. They'll just not go there. Right. You know, there's a lot of homeless people. So we just won't go there. Yeah. Instead of doing anything to clean it up or help them or put them in shelter or, but that, I guess my question is what, what do you reckon they do about it? Me? Like the, yeah. Like what, how do you, how do you fix those young American? Numero uno. You got to start with, with immigration. How is, what does those homeless guys do have to do with? immigration because a lot of them came over they don't have jobs they don't have anything and in they're Venice, they're homeless so I, I don't where else would you go i that's i'm where saying I, would go. I don't i don't see a lot of them not being just like american dudes what do you mean uh the homeless people i it's it's mixed now across okay. the board so it's it it's gotten so bad that i don't i don't think you can define it to to just one singular race race anymore like uh, that's what it is when i said st stop it with immigration first right first mm -hmm. of all stop letting people in the, into the country control what you have now and then figure out what the numbers are homeless wise right and then build around that figure out how to get them off the streets once you have a hard number to deal with the problem is you're not going to get it anymore there's so many people in and out and across the border and all that stuff you don't know what the funding is that you need for for homelessness for shelters for oh, so instead food. of doing stuff for the refugees, for these immig immigrants, Every, everything else, correct. we'll do more for, for uh, the people that live here. That are in America. And stop American homelessness first. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying about immigration and everything else. Yep. 
figure out what that is and then how to finance that first and actually get a number of it of because we don't really know Mm -hmm. um and that was you know we talked about the census the other day about saying whether or not you were a citizen that that one singular question that's going to help determine the funding for all of these areas and how many people actually live there and what's going on right right now i don't know that you'll ever get a number because a lot of people just roam from place to place to place but it's like all right, cool. Who is that? Why? How do we get them off the streets and into a better life? Right. You're not going to know what to spend or what, you, what budget you need state by state if, if you don't get an accurate assessment of how many people actually live in your state and how, how many people are out on the streets. I think that's one. Two, with LA and all that stuff, like you've got you've to stop becoming sanctuary cities where all of this shit is okay. How'd they fix it in New York? They just kept kicking them out, kicking them out. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it got, and then they built it up. So, I mean, they started with little things in New York where, I mean, it was the smallest things where, like, railings, just railings, right? They wanted to keep the riffraff out, mm-hmm. like skateboarding and people hopping in, you know, other people's shit and digging in the trash. They put these just little tiny metal spikes on all the gates. Like, mm-hmm. if, you, if you go there and just look at the top of the gates of the things, like... That was, that was one of the first things they made where it was just like, all right. And I thought it was maybe just for skateboarding. And they were like, no, you also can't reach over. Right. It makes it, deters people from just jumping over, just seeing that little spike. Mm-hmm. And it's not like crazy sharp or anything. It's just uh, kind of the roundness of maybe the end of an iPhone, right? But it's, it's up. It's maybe two or three inches up. So you can't, you know, yeah. reach over into people's garbage. You can't pull out their cans. You can't pull out their mm-hmm. shit. Uh, you know, skateboarding was the other thing. It was like, oh, it's too dangerous, everything else. Then they started with, with park benches. Park benches was another one. You ever notice there's a divider mm-hmm. on all the park benches it's to keep people from sleeping across yeah, them? Yeah. So that was another one. And then Central Park. But it's park, more like police just kept moving them, kept well, they kept them, passing kept laws. moving them. Correct. And they yeah. kept passing new laws in New York, right? Right. And there was a, a mayor, I don't know, wasn't Giuliani? There's somebody Bloomberg? else. That, 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 no, I forget. God bless it. I forget who who it was. Who's credited with cleaning up the city? And there's a group, a specific group. And once New York was cleaned up, that guy is now in L.A., um, but he's working in the Hollywood district, not on the beaches. Um, but the Central Park thing was next to New York, so they started passing laws we couldn't sleep in the park because mm-hmm. that used to be a thing. Yeah, where it was like, man, don't yeah, go Central into Central park, park. Yeah, was not like a safe place no not at go. all i remember no. that for sure yeah so then they, they started passing like, you can't sleep in the park mm. uh you can't go to the park after certain hours that type of thing i think that's where you start it and then uh you know you've got to be honest with yourself about what these people do what you can do with them how many of them need mental help and and all yeah. of that other stuff that's like the other thing and yeah then- you know, instead of giving them needles, it's like we need to give them rehab. Well, instead of, instead of giving them boxes, like it's Starbucks, right? Yeah, or clean just places encouraging to it. shoot up. Exactly. Saying, hey, man, cool, just keep shooting up and we're going to put a box in at Starbucks or whatever it is. So that must have been the thing in Seattle where it's just like, what do we do? It was, yeah. They're going to keep doing it. Yes. <laughs> uh, they won't go to a rehab facility even if we build it. So what's the other option to clean up our streets not to help them yeah i mean their hope is really that they just kill themselves well in a clean separate area that i don't have to see that's what the hospitals and the prison systems want to happen because when i was there they got you know all those hospitals got popped for dumping those homeless people out in the middle of the night still in the the robes yeah still in that that paper thing and they Mm. were just like letting them out of vans down on skid row and they got popped doing that because they didn't want to take care of them anymore. They were being overran. Mm-hmm. The police were like, we don't want to deal with this anymore. And that's the problem when you are a sanctuary city where you're not allowed to, you know, really arrest them unless they're doing things and, and everything else. It's just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up. And this, look, this started maybe 10 years ago. Because mm-hmm. there was a period when you and I lived there where Venice was clean, where it was just like, man. It was cleaned up a little bit. I mean, there was the, you know, the classic people trying to sell stuff or playing a guitar. On yeah, the thing, yeah, yeah, But yeah. it wasn't. And there was actually, it always has been, once it gets dark there, you got to get out. Yeah. It yeah. has never been like, 
that clean to where it's New York. Like New York, you can go anywhere. Any I, time I, I, of feel, night. I feel safe in New York pretty much any time. So night. in Venice, it was like totally fine during the day and a little bit after sunset. And then always, always it was like you have to get out of there. Right. So, yeah, I look, you got multi million dollar houses now that are all throughout Venice. You can't buy you can't buy a house in Venice for under a million dollars right now. Mm-mm. Not even off the beach. Mm-mm. On the beach, forget about it. Mm. Probably four to five, somewhere mm. in there. So, I, And you're buying the house with all those homeless people outside. Yes. So like, yeah, it's $4 million, but like people are going to shit in your yard. Shit in your yard. And that's what Johnny Rotten was saying was like, I can't get in the door. Like I've got to climb over these people to get inside. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest issue when, oh, we're in a sanctuary city and everybody can just live and you're free and there's no borders. You can do whatever you want. Don't discriminate. That's what happens is your city gets overran. Yeah, people. And then you're a hostage inside your own three, four million dollar mansion at that point. You don't want to go outside. If you could, if you could Postmates everything and get everything shipped in, eh, great. Your view is awesome. Yeah. You know, as long as you're up on your Ugh. second story, not looking down at the homeless people, but even your view being is amazing. where those really nice houses are <laughs> over there at night, like is fucking scary. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know it. Like you oh, can I smell it. it right now. Just as you said that, you can smell it. I know it. Yeah. So with it. Johnny Rotten turning, Cher turning, I wonder how long it is. The only reason, like Alyssa Milano and these the rest of these assholes don't bitch about it, is they live up in the hills. Yeah, they don't live in any area that they're not in in with the people. Yes. So they are they are up Calabasas in the hills. Calabasas doesn't have to deal with no. it. Um, these kind of Beverly Hills, like. There's places where you can completely not even understand. And the reason why is because you're in the hills. So you've got to walk. If you, let's say you were homeless or a robber, because this is what they pitched me on when I moved to Beachwood Canyon. They were like, I was like, how, how is the crime and everything up here or whatever? And they were like, nobody wants to steal uphill. No. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Same with homeless. Or they're not like going to the walk all the way up. Or through, whatever. Yeah, the they're not going to walk three miles up into the canyons. <laughs> to yeah. sleep in front of Deborah Messing's house or, or Alyssa Milano. She, I think she's probably, I think she's in a gated community in Calabasas. And you're like, bro, I'm sure I can't even, I'm sure just take a walk, just take a walk down there and, and see how safe it is. And let me know if your family feels safe down there. Yeah. And even Beverly Hills, every place is no loitering and it's all stores and things. So yeah. like you can't, you can't, you can't no. be anywhere. You just keep getting kicked, kicked, kicked all the way to the beach and they pay top dollar the taxpayers in beverly hills to have that yes. of like hey there is no homelessness on rodeo drive or canaan or any of those for that reason of like all right great right uh, the problem with santa monica and venice is those areas are still i would say in the last 15 years new new rich where it was just like oh cool man like back in the day, you could still get houses for for cheap, and like they don't have that kind of money yet. Like the 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 zones haven't changed where they have that kind of money to take over the board and say, "All right, the Venice police has got to be more vigilant." Santa Monica police, right? Has but they be more also vigilant. have the beach element, so like yeah. there is the public beach there, so you can chill there. You know, migrate in a little bit, get kicked out, go back to the beach, and it's just like. Like I said, they you push can't stop them. people from going to the beach. No. So they push and push and push and push them. And then they finally end up in the beach. And that's why like Ventura was so, you know, bad too. Cause it's like you push them from main street uh-huh. out from there, out from the benches, blah, blah, blah. But they just go to the, to beach. the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the weather is nice. And so that's look, that's not going to change. Uh, it's just not, but I was, whoever sent that in, it was a super interesting read. Cause I, I didn't, I didn't know about that. I didn't hear about it. And I was like, oh, man. Now, once the punk rock guy goes down, the father of punk. Right. Then it's like, all right, cool. Um, I just like how everybody changes when they get older. Get older and get some money. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's everybody in the end, once you get older and have money. Always. Switches to the other side of like, you know what, man? It's I'm really tired of people. Tired of the shit. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> you just like you forget it's like a you know you for you 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 totally forget how you felt at that age i i don't me do you 
Like I, I yeah. remember how yeah. I felt at that age, but I remember capitalism and the American dream and all that stuff. And that was always the biggest part, right? Where you, to me, when you're, you know, you're in your teens or twenties, you're like, oh man, I can help people and change the world and all that stuff. Then as you get older, you look back on it and you're like, man, there's, there's some things I can't help without certain laws in place. You know, like you could go out and give food to the homeless every single night down there and never reach the end of it right? ever. So I, I think as you get older, it's not so much the punk rock is gone maybe, but it's, it's uh, money and then laws. And then you realize government is just stuck. You can't, do, you can't really do anything about this, you know? And then Trump was, I, he said this and I don't know, I don't know if it's true. I, I would imagine it's true because he tweeted it out, but uh, he said that he was dumping off because all these illegals are coming in. The borders are fucking crazy right now. And he, he's, he's instructing ICE and all those guys just to drop them off in sanctuary cities. And he said that that's already begun. So oh, great. his point was this. If you want to be a sanctuary city, then let's try to take you off of federal funding because clearly you don't need it. And then let's really put, like, since it's a sanctuary for everyone, let's just put all the people that you want to help or save or, or, or everything that you've said that you, you stand for, let's go ahead and put them in your city and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And it's going to be an absolute nightmare. That's great. Um, so congratulations if you're in one of these cities. Because, I mean, we, all we get messages, whenever we talk about this, all we get is messages, by the way, from people who live in Seattle and, like, Portland in particular. Um, all up and down the West Coast who were like, hey, man, thanks for talking about it. It was it's worse than you were, you're actually saying. Mm. We don't go there that much. So, like, I, I don't know, except for what to we where? read. Yeah. Uh, up and down the West Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, even that last trip to L.A., we were there for what, three weeks, three and a half weeks or whatever. I didn't go to the beach one single time. No. Didn't have time for it. No, because we were in like the Silver Lake area. Yeah. And it's about four hours <laughs> to go to for a 12 the, mile. For a 12 mile. To, absolutely. To go that over there. So, no. Speaking of Hollywood, by the way, uh, Empire sticking with Jussie. Every time I think this story is over, because I'm sick of him, I'm sick of that whole fucking bullshit. Ugh. Every time I think this story is over, something else just keeps popping up with this fucking guy. And you, you're forced to talk about it. Got what he wanted. So he gets this off from this. all he wanted from all this. The DA drops the case. Kim Fox, who will no longer have a job whenever her next election mm -hmm. is up. The city's suing him for $185,000. And by doing that, it, it, they want one of two outcomes. The city of Chicago is suing this. By the, the, the case costs $185,000 to investigate this, this fake hoax that he created. This fake, fake you know, racial hoax. Sure. Um, and they, they want their money back. Uh, or they want them to go to trial. That's number two. Right. So they can say, here's all the evidence we have. Mm -hmm. I can promise you this. They're going to settle on a number and this will never go to trial. No. Um, one. Two. With Empire, which shoots in Chicago, if they bring this fucking show back with him on, because the cast, Taraji P. Ooh. Henson, Terrence Howard, all of them signed a petition saying we want Jesse back. We think that he was validated and that in the, in the, and then they got political in this letter they wrote to, to Fox. They said in the current political climate, we believe that there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. And it was just like, come on. There is. And then he was spotted having lunch, like a power lunch at a posh New York restaurant with a showrunner, which I can promise you this. Especially with Fox, because we know the answer to this with Clayne. They don't tell you shit. They cut off all communication once oh, they, they are done, with, done you, with you. Zero communication. Bye bye. I can promise you the showrunner would not be at lunch with Jussie if they weren't discussing his comeback and, and how they're going to deal with it Absolutely. and all of this shit. I would be shocked if Fox picked up the series again. Because I don't know who's going to watch it after that. The ratings were shit on their finale. Yeah. Because people were like, I'm, I am done with this show and this asshole. If they bring this back, this would be unbelievably shocking. I mean, I, I think, what is it? We're at the end of April here. Usually upfronts is 
second weekend in New York of May. They're going to make a decision here in probably in the next 10 days of whether or not the show is coming back because they have, they have to do the meet and greet with the advertisers in New York. Mm-hmm. If he's in New York already, they have to be bringing this show back. I'm not going to watch it. People are going to rage. I'm surprised because Disney I watched for a while. Disney so. bought Fox and uh, the fact that they would want this kind of controversy on their rosters is is really surprising. Well, not sure what to say about that. Why? Um, because the the layers are like in the intersectionality game mm-hmm. that is now the world that we live in he is second on the totem so if it was a black lady yeah she would be you know you can't say shit to her sure you can't offend her you can't fire her you can't not believe her right black lady gay black man i mean uh, yeah we you're, really, you're really checking all the, the boxes there checking all the boxes of they are right in this day and age. We can't, we can't not believe. We can't. Um, but the police, the chief of police believe. The mayor of Chicago believes. I am mm-hmm. um, proof positive <laughs> that the, DO, the, the Department of Justice will probably get involved at some point here. Has to, During right? this case. I mean. You can't fake a hate crime on a national level like this. And get away with it. I, I don't think What's so in today's world. What's amazing to me is that, I mean, he is maintaining that he did not do that. Well, look, they dropped all the charges. Mm-hmm. What else is he going to say? Right. I wouldn't say shit. Move on with my life. Because when it does come out or whenever, you know, I wouldn't say shit. Yeah. So Don't, come, don't then come out and be like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. What are you saying? You didn't do anything. We know you did it. Yeah. Everybody knows you did it. What are you talking about? Again, if it had been dropped and he just fucking disappeared, it would be like, hey, the the headline is he got away with whatever it was or it wasn't a big enough crime to put whatever, whatever. But him coming out after and being like, see, yeah, I told you. And exactly like this, too. Same as the interview that he fucking did. Yeah. See, I told you I would not be my mother's son. If I could ever do something like this. And you're like, but you did. That's ah, crazy, isn't but it? But you did. Yeah. And it was all over. Look, and the police have it narrowed down to something so specific as he wanted to raise on the show. Look, if you're the police department, you, and you know all the facts. We've seen all the videos with the brothers buying the rope and the, the red hats and all that stuff. And you're like, Man, I don't know what else we need what do at you need? this point to move on. And there's cameras all over that city. I don't. I just don't understand how you think you're going to get away with anything anymore. I, the the other story too was this. You this, can get away with it if you are at a certain level of we don't want to offend you. You you can. So here's so he got away with it because of that. It's such a small portion though at the at the top who can get away with it now though. It's amazing, isn't I it? I don't know. It's, is it the lady was what black lady that let him off? He is gay black man. That whatever the show that is putting him back on the air is all black. Yeah, Lee Daniels. But I, look, the the head of Fox is not. So we'll see. The head of Disney is not. We'll see. But again, they could be bringing them back because they don't want to offend anybody. So I don't know. It's going to offend the audience. I can tell you that. Uh, but speaking of these cameras being everywhere, uh, there was another awesome story that I read about these. Did you hear about the the bad grandpas? The eight bad grandpas over in England. No, what? What is this? This this reminds me of like when you hear this story. When I when I read it, I was like, man, have I seen this movie with like Tommy Lee Jones and like Clint Eastwood and maybe Morgan Freeman, or um, a little maybe a John Travolta in there? Or no, no, you need it. Like you need an older an older man in this. Like a bunch of older men. How They're calling them Travolta's? the eight grandpas. Uh, they were all like thieves back in the day. Okay. They're all between the ages of like 53 and 75 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And they all get together. One of the guys who was like 70 was was saying, man, I'm I'm starting to run out of cash. Like, what if we just did one last job? Just one one job together. Again, it sounds like a movie with like, yeah, uh, with like a Clint Eastwood in it, you know? 
Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's just yeah. angry about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this a one Morgan last. Morgan Freeman, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to do one last mm-hmm. job. I'm going to go out there mm-hmm. and do. I say we can all get together, come up with a perfect plan and do one last job. They actually did it. So the eight of them got together and they robbed a, a jewelry store like where people's jewelry was inside the safe mm-hmm. and they used like a battering ram and all this shit. And like, look, London in particular is notorious for how many cameras and the big brother element of it. Oh, sure. It's probably the most surveilled city there is mm-hmm. maybe in the world where it's just like they have cameras from everywhere. Well, they kept bashing in this thing and uh, it was only like on a Saturday and they couldn't crack it. And I guess it wasn't only open on like business days or something. They couldn't crack it. And so like half of them gave up. They're like, we can't get through this thing. And the other half were like, fuck this. We're going to go back in and get it. And they did. Um, and they all got caught. And they all, <laughs> oh. they all went down. And over in England, this story came out. And they've kind of become heroes. Where everybody's like, look, nobody got hurt. Nobody was in the store at the time. It was over the weekend. The thing was closed. Like, so what? Let's go easy. They each got seven years. Which isn't terrible. That's a lot. They stole twenty million dollars worth in jewelry. <laughs> but one of them probably just got back in contact with their daughter, you know, and they were gonna all of it. They did. Yeah, everything you were thinking gonna, happened. Yes, and they did were gonna happen. like make it work. Yeah, and just one last job, yeah. dear. You know, the the daughter finally was like, okay, forgave them for the previous. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, and then you know? like uh, some of the some of the guys teamed up against uh, one person and was like he made everybody do this. He was the Ooh, one that really that. needed them. It's exactly what you would see in a movie with you know. Maybe it would be more of like a Guy Ritchie deal. But was but still with Clint Eastwood. Sure, Morgan sure, Freeman, sure. I'm right, just saying right. it'd be right. you <laughs> Tommy know. Lee Jones. <laughs> yeah, 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 Michael Caine. You got to throw Michael but Caine a guy, in there. Yeah, Guy Ritchie type. Huh, where they're like freeze, you know? Yeah. Super fast running in a freeze. Guaranteed. I would say the over under for this being bought into a movie Abs- is uh, probably 60 days. Absolutely. That's my over under on that. What would we call it? Well, they're calling them the eight bad grandpas. So this, that's what they've kind of labeled them as over there. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Senior thief. I don't like. I don't. I don't know. You, you know. Right. Right. A A R thief. A A R thief. Yeah. Instead of A A R P. No. Is that a reach? Am I, re- did I reach on that one? A A R thief. Nailed it. Did I reach on that one? Was that? Am I reaching on that one? Why wouldn't it be like A A R T? But yeah. Uh, I don't know, James. Just A A R T. A A R T. And nailed it. Nailed, nailed it. it. Proud of yourself. I'm, Gosh, I'll think about I feel it. Great about that. Gosh, I'll think about it. <laughs> so when they call me for my name, it's going to be something of Father Time, right? Or like the family jewel or like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandpa Wood. <laughs> Uh, grandpa's wood you can't you know you can't you can't no. call it grandpa's wood grandpa's watch no you can't yeah you can't call it grandpa's wood by the way so oh, please why? don't do that i you know i think that would conjure Just the wood, up like the wood that he nope nope the wood that grandpa has no at no. His... <laughs> nope what are you gonna start the fire with still... grandpa wood <laughs> Everybody You're knows. You're still talking that. about an old man's dick. No, I'm yeah. talking about wood. You know, grandpa's, grandpa's always have you know a <laughs> stick to beat people off or wood to start the fire. Don't, don't grandpa's always the grandpa's always have wood around. The grandpa's wood. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. We're gonna go ahead and retract that. I'd real like quick. a song to be in the movie. You know that song? I don't care. I love it. I think Randy Newman. Is Randy Newman still alive? I think he is. Yeah. Randy Newman should definitely do it. So no, not like, not like a, I don't care. care. I, I love it. it. Like that no. kind of vibe. No. no. Boys are back in town. definitely going to be in it. And I think it's, Obviously. I think it's scored and by Randy Newman. And Jailbreak will be at the end. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching uh, Teen Wolf came on last night mm-hmm. and I was watching that. Another Randy Newman song popped up in the middle of that and I forgot about it. I was like, oh Classic. man. Classic, Classic. Newman. 
He popped up right in the scored middle. Our, scored our entire life, childhood. Right when he turns into a werewolf in the middle of the basketball game, that's when it kicks that's in Newman, and they huh? start winning all those games. Um, big, big Teen Wolf fan. And again, that extra, I put that that picture of that guy's penis on my Instagram still stories. Still in there. They still leave that little that crazy? snippet. Yeah, I would think that by now. Whoever doesn't know this story, by the way, I posted it. You can go to my Instagram at, at stjamesstjames if you want to check it out. I posted, this is my favorite extra move of all time. Uh, right when Michael J. Fox hits the game-winning free throws, dad's waiting in the stands to give him a big hug. There's one extra out of all of the, the 300 that rushed the floor to congratulate the Teen Wolf for winning the title. Mm-hmm. One extra stands right by the dad and pulls his dickhead out of his pants mm-hmm. and leaves it there and just is clapping. He's clapping and then with and his dickhead. Right at it's that. Right, it's the perfect moment. Yeah, and how did they you, know? You want to talk about tweet. finding the camera. He found the camera. Oh. And then when it cuts back, you can see that he's quickly zipping up his pants real quick mm-hmm. as fast as he can. Mm-hmm. It's still in there. And it's still in there. It's amazing. It's amazing. But that was another Newman pick. Try and find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. I was surprised that there was some Newman in there. So yeah, if you're gonna score the Grandpa's Wood movie, Grandpa, yeah, Grandpa's Wood, you've got to go Newman on that whole score. I feel. Yeah, yeah. Maybe throw Biden in it, like have Joe Biden make a surprise appearance, just kind of like around the corner. Yeah, just pop around and be mm-hmm. like, "Hey, guys," mm-hmm. you know. Maybe try and do an English accent. Now, are they all gonna do I would English like that. accents? I think you have to. So we're talking. It takes place in London, right? So we're talking. They were all British. Clint Eastwood. Don't see him doing an English accent. Tommy Lee Jones. I, I could see. Oi. I could see TJ Lee doing it. He could probably do one. Oof. Michael Caine. Michael he's, Caine, obviously. He's, he's going to be great at it. Morgan Freeman doesn't do any other voice except for nope. Morgan Freeman. Nope. Nope. That it was like would Vince be Vaughn hilarious. doing a Southern accent last yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> Why, dude? Why? But I think I think you go that route, maybe uh, you know, maybe age up a uh, Vinny Jones. Yeah, I was just gonna say. Well, that's why I say a guy Richie. Yeah, because he's got. Con- he's if Connery, got a bunch Connery of retired old, from acting, yeah, but he's if got, Connery was still there. Boom, you mm, throw him blammo. in. Blammo. Bush of blammos. Oh, blammo, blammo, for sure. Yeah. Uh, but Biden, by the way, he, he he popped his little head into the news. What happened? Uh, people were, were were wondering, you know, because he's older, and they were saying he's trying to get rid of the grandpa vibe, the creepy, uh, creepy uncle. They're calling uh-huh. him Uncle Joe online, the grandpa vibe. He said he's had a bunch of work done, and they were like, "Are the is the media going to come down on Biden the same way they came down on Hillary Clinton for getting work done?" Work. Uh, so I, he got a bunch of Botox. Yeah, um, we know. I didn't know that. Oh, I, did, you can I, tell. I had no idea. He um, has the- Botox. So he got hair plugs. Um, mm-hmm. They were showing like pictures of him in the seventies versus now. He has more hair now than he did in the seventies, and I was like, "Yeah, oh, I didn't know that." Uh, veneers, look, man, if, if everybody could afford veneers, to go do it. I mean, they're amazing, especially at a certain age. Yeah, it's either denture or veneer, right? Yeah, and if you can afford veneers, good, good on you. Yeah, they're great. Um, man, your teeth are just constantly white. Oof. You can drink red wine and coffee all day long. Oof. Go ahead and do it. Save you from getting your teeth whitened. Yep. That fucking awful feeling in your mm-hmm. goddamn mouth for the mm-hmm. next week, two mm-hmm. weeks after that. Sure. So, I don't know. I I, I think he, they're going to give him a pass on this one. I don't think anybody's going to say shit because he's a dude. Yeah. And why would they? Because it gets nasty. So, that's the thing. So, but why... Why would why did they give Hillary shit and what did she get done? Because they were trying to they were looking for an Whatever edge. Whatever it is, it didn't work. They were looking for an edge mm-hmm. to say, hey, this candidate is so old. You do not you can't trust them. You know, with Hillary, they were like, she's always falling down. She's got all these problems. She's not showing up anywhere. She's too old. She's too frail. So this is the one thing they're going. This is the not the one thing, but the major thing that they're they're going after Biden for because he's seventy nine. Right. So he's trying to get some work done to uh, to hip up a little young up a little bit. Sure. And I I understand it because that's that's the main argument they have. Him and Bernie are the two. What Bernie's what seventy eight. Mm-hmm. Biden I think is seventy nine. So that's going to be a major issue this summer during the the debates and all that stuff of of age because it'll go there real quick. Have you hung out with an eighty year old lately? 
I re- uh, my grandparents were in their 80s. It's rough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It depends. You just don't trust them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? To like know what they're talking about. Do you, would you trust them to drive your kids around? Would you trust them to, you know? Yeah. You do, but there's a little thing in the back where you're like, gosh, they aren't as sharp. You know what's weird? So on my on my dad's side, my, my grandfather always drove. He was pretty sharp. There was no issues out of him. Like, steady customer. Cool, calm, and collected the entire time. Um, he was fine. Other grandfathers, though, yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. A hundred percent. Think of an just eighty. So your grandpa was probably seventies. Yeah, he was. When you're when yep. you're talking the way that you're talking about yeah. him, which is you can really hold it together, and Biden has, and uh, Bernie, you can really hold it together till a certain point, and then no matter what, eighty to ninety. Yep. It starts to go. Danger zone. It just starts to go. It doesn't matter who you are. No. You cannot beat it. You can get all the work done you want, but you cannot beat. They still haven't figured out, which they will at some point, right? Yeah. Figure out how to sharpen the brain along with the Botox, right? Yeah, oh yeah. But they haven't. So when I hear him talk, when I see him, I've, I saw him on interviews before he put his hat in. It was like Today Show and uh-huh. he's with his wife and she has to finish his sentences like i've said many times yes. she has to keep him on track yeah she has to uh remind him of what he was talking about um to kind of prop him up same with pelosi though you know when i see her oh god when we found out how old she was boom i understood Done. then I was, I, was like, I was like oh shit all right oh bro go yeah away yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta go yeah same so with the, the people that are making decisions and people that are running things are. By the way, I don't care what party you are, Democrat or Republican. 80. I don't want to fucking hear about it. Like, get them, get them all out of there at that age. Yeah. There should I mean, be a term I think limit. That, yes. I think at a certain age, you should be moving on. Yeah. Retiring. Right? I think. So I, I don't be surprised if this comes up in this election. I'm not surprised, but I'm just saying that... Uh, it, it worries me. And like I'm saying, think of anyone you know in their 80s. Anyone. Yeah, I know. Lady that you see at the Walmart <laughs> that wants to talk to you about God knows what, right? <laughs> 80s. That's 80s. Yeah. Okay. AD. Eight uh, zero. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, okay. I thought you were saying after death for a second, like AD, like before beast, like... That, that's after BC. I or, like when yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about, and you're trying to like follow. Uh, man, I am in the mind. I'm in the yeah. mind of a maniac right now. Right, and I say <laughs> a lot of times, I'm like, you know what I mean, and you're like, no, nope. yeah, no, sure, no idea. moving on, yeah, no idea. But this, yep. is, this is a perfect segue for a crime corner. Oh no, crime corner. <laughs> Crime corner. <laughs> what? I need the break. I know you, know, you do. You, I need the break. For the, the people, editing of the video show on the YouTube. People yes. People know. People know. So listen. Oh, crap. Oh, there <laughs> it is. I need to know who, who sent it to me. Compu- Sorry. Your computer is not working again. No, I'm, I'm just somehow. saying. No, I'm saying. Okay, so T T F Flynn 2. There we go. Ayo, who are you? So Flynn, he's a public figure, okay? Um, <laughs> what is that? Because when you put public fin- figure under your name, I still haven't done it. Is only it on Instagram, Facebook or Instagram? So on Instagram, you can put public figure underneath. Really? Yeah. I didn't do that. Even with the, Yeah, me neither. Uh, I feel like anybody could do that, right? Anyone can. You just have to have the fucking balls. <laughs> do you know what I mean? To be like, I'm a public figure, right? Which Flynn clearly does. I like it, Flynn. I like it, Flynn. I like the balls. Yeah. You know, I like the... Uh, the brass. The brass. The Sm- moxie. Yeah. Anyways. The hubris. So he, <laughs> he, he sent me this, Detective Flynn. Detective Flynn. Yeah. Easy. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds real good. Sounds real. Rolls off the tongue. So I, he sent me a, a, 
a a, cr- the, a crime. Yeah, there it is. Whatever. As you're searching on your computer. It's like I'm 80. <laughs> AD years old. Florida teen arrested after a video shows him wrestling a fake alligator. Okay. In a mall. Ah. But this isn't the first. So he he does this RKO move. You know this from yeah, wrestling? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the behind Big the... Big fan of that move. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Flynn also told me, hey, not sure you know this move, by the way. Yeah, but it's I, a wrestling all, move. And I'm like, thanks, yeah. Flynn. Yeah, exactly. Public figure, Flynn. No, I love you. Just joking. <laughs> um, so, so this isn't the first time he's done this. So apparently he goes... He's on a an RKO rampage. So he was first... Uh, arrested for trying to do this move on his principal ah, at school. He's a Florida teen. Guys, was he obviously. okay? So let me ask you this: Was he trying to get these video? Like, was he videoing it, trying to get him to go viral? Because that's that, that's a right. big move, right? Right. So that's a big move. So first he was. I there's no video of the principal one, so I'm not sure why that happened. But he was arrested for trying to his principal at school trying to RKO him. Sure. Um, And then later, a week later, he gets this video. He jumps into this like fake pond with a big, huge fake alligator. Right. Jumps over the thing, rips off his clothes. He has like a, you know, shorts on and just does an RKO on the fake alligator. alligator. Is there any video of that? Yeah. There we go. That's what that's what it's for. That's what it's for. But I kind of like it. I, I don't mind. Here's the thing. I don't mind pranks and shit like that. Where sure, it's like, he's hey, the RKO guy. So nobody's he's just gonna... nobody's getting hurt. Now the principal could have gotten hurt. Yeah, and it's so, a move that can. Oh yeah, hurt you. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now if you're if you're at, the, at a Bills game, it's pretty much mandatory. Everybody that that is attending the game or in the parking lot is getting RKO'd um, into a table or on lit on fire. Like that is mandatory at a Bills game. I understand it. Okay. Um, kids are doing this online everywhere. I think it's fucking hilarious. Uh, but as long as nobody gets hurt, obviously. Right. So the fake I like, alligator one, I'll stand behind. Yeah, I like that he moved on to fake <laughs> alligator. But to me, you know, with these things, it's just the visual. So him jumping over the thing at the mall. Yeah. Take stripping down and RKOing the fake the alligator. Fake alligator. To me, I'm like, I could hang out with you. Yeah, you're like that. You're my people. That'd be fun. Yeah, you're my people. And then you get arrested, and like that's hilarious. Like the police come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you RKO'd. I wonder if it was like one of those wishing wells. It looks like that. Well, it looks like a crazy, like a jungle in the middle of some mall in Miami, right? Miami, yeah. So they're gonna have some weird jungle thing in the middle of the mall with fake alligators. I I approve of that one. I don't know if he should have gotten arrested. Well, what are you gonna do? Just shoo him out. Shoo him out? Hey, brother, take your alligator and go home. Well, they're trying to stop his RKO rampage, probably. Maybe. He's on a, you know, a principal rampage. alligator. What next? <sighs> Sky's the limit. I was going to say kicking swans, but we've already done that story. Yeah, so it's like, it's like that guy, only fake. Only fake. Yeah. Yeah. The kicking swans guy, like, really... He kicked a swan. Yeah. yeah that was real. He continues to do so. Yeah. continues to do so to this day, but he's practicing karate. Yes. So we'll, we'll give that to him. What, who's that shirt you're wearing, by the way? Oh, this is Bronx Blue. This uh, is... Talking to the microphone? This is uh, Judge yep. Torres. There we go. 2019. 2019. Who, who's the company that makes that? Bronx Blue? Bronx Blue. So they are the Yankees apparel... Company. That's dope. I like that shit. Yeah, it says make the Bronx great again, which I... Well, look, I picked the Yankees on, the, on my sports show to actually win the World Series this year. They have yeah, 14 players. No. They have 14 players on injured reserves. Like, fuck. I, if they can come out of that some, somehow miraculously and win the title, amazing. I've never seen a, a team in baseball have, lose 14 players to the DL before. Uh, but I, I like that that company. What's what's their story? Do they have uh, they go to the games? Are they so New York? New Yorkers? So Bronx Blue, uh, they have apparel, and then they do these meetups. So they kind of organize uh, meetups at Yankee Stadium. So whenever they're at home, I don't know if it's Word. only at Yankees, but I'm gonna try next time we're in New York. I'm gonna try and get in on one of those. Hell yeah! Just like groups. 
that what, go. Did they, have a, they have a block of seats together? I remember some some yeah, uh, something. some people doing that, that for Indians games back yeah, in the day. Yeah, it's something like this. And you all meet up before and have drinks and then you go to the game. And I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. And I like their apparel and I like their vibe. They seem like pretty cool dudes. Bron- the Bronx Blue. You can find them on Instagram. Hell yeah. And then uh, you can go to their website from there. And they've just, you know, they've got some just like cool, simple shirts. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, nothing too crazy right now, but I like the vibe. I so. saw the other one downstairs and I was like, yeah, hey, yeah. Okay, cool. The, yeah, yeah the, cool. the Aaron Judge one. That's awesome. We've been getting some awesome shit. Fucking Rick and Ben, dude. Sent in uh, Body. a nice little tumbler, a little BRCC now, Yeti. Now, Captain, Captain Aben. He's so captain. He he's is a captain of the show. Forever, you know. I know he's trying to retire, but he's in our. He can't our, retire from my our precinct, precinct Hall of Fame, though. Um. So Rick Abend, you're the man. He always sends us cool ass shit. Yeah. And um, he said he sent this. Uh, it's a Yeti. Uh, cup. It was made by prisoners. He said. Yes. I didn't know prisoners made Yetis. Well, they. They engraved it. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, so gotcha, they gotcha. did like my name and yeah. the BRCC logo, logo and shit. Really? That's cool. Yeah. Like he's like awesome. Yeah, he's rad. Um, and any, anybody else who wants to send anything crazy into the PO box, uh, PO box thirty-seven ninety-three, Wilmington, North Carolina two eight four zero six. And then uh, did Richard we'll Janoff send us? He did. Dude, our buddy Richard. So, I, man, we've got to go and do a tailgate, a live show from Richard's tailgate this year at Ohio State. It's the best tailgate I personally have ever been to. And he's one of the greatest people on the planet. Yeah. Um, and uh, we were gone for like 35 days. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so a couple of people's things got sent back and they're like, hey, man, our, our package I got know. sent. But we were gone. I think they only hold it for like 30 days or something. Yeah. So we were in Los Angeles and then San Antonio and some other places. But uh, we're not going anywhere the rest of the year for, for 30 days ever again. Unless there's yeah, a, sorry. an apocalypse type situation. Sure, 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 sure. Then we're all sure. fucked at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, all, we're all in that together. Uh, now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, James? We shall. Um, this, guy, this guy's name is Jesse. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. What a, it's always a guy. It was very princish. Uh. It's always a guy. Me? No, it's always a guy that's named Jesse. Yeah, you're right. I get that a lot if, if you're a dude mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, are you married to a male partner? Yep. I get, I get that all the time. I'm like, no, no, it's a it's a lady. It's a fine lady. It's and they're like, look, lady. hey, no we don't judge. Right. And yeah. you're like, no, no. And the more you say it, the more you sound crazy. The more it's just yeah. like, all right, cool. The more they're like, he is gay. Yeah, he is. He's probably going to leave here and try to suck his own dick in the parking lot before he goes home. So who's the revolutionary <laughs> figure? <laughs> Uh, his name is Jesse Lawrence Ferguson, and um, was one of my f- my favorites. I was a huge fan of the movie Boys in the Hood. Sure, he was an actor in the movie Boys in the Hood. He played the dirty cop who uh, pinned down uh, our boy. Okay, our boy Radio. Okay, our boy from Jerry Maguire, the Oscar winner. Oh, Cuba, Cuba, Cuba getting junior. Couldn't think Pins of his him name. down against Couldn't the, think of his name. the car. No, I'm reading off his highlights. I know, but you're like, I'm reading our off boy. I, we love, we love radio. Cuba. Here's the thing. We love it's Cuba okay. Gooding Jr. It's okay if you couldn't think of the name. Some people shit on Cuba Gooding Jr. I, we actually love Cuba Gooding Jr. Who would shit on him? After Snow Dogs, man, he went through a rough patch. Snow Dogs? Yeah, he did that movie where he was with the dogs and like everybody made fun of him. It was a bad thing. They were like, man, why would an Oscar winner do fucking Snow Dogs uh, right afterwards? And, and it's like, like a kid's movie? Yeah. They backed up the truck is what they did, and they gave him a fuck ton of money. You're right, Cuba. Um, He's all, I'm fine, guys. Yeah. Don't worry about me. Uh, it was nice to see him pop up in the O.J. Simpson thing. Oh, Anyways, for sure. he got pinned down by the dirty cop in the car, and he goes, oh, oh the <laughs> Jesse Lawrence Ferguson. I used to, we used to say this to each other as kids, these lines from this movie over and over and over again. Oh, you think you tough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I bet you one of them rolling 60s. Yeah. One of them Crenshaw Mafia motherfuckers. Um, so this is Jesse. This is Jesse. This, okay. These were his lines. Okay. We used to say this over and over and over again. I think again. I've heard you guys say that to each other. All the time. All the time. I don't it's try one, and get one into those... your inside jokes. No, I've, you don't. I've but I'm, gonna let, I'm, I'm let letting the world. I'm letting, I'm letting the world in now. Mm-hmm. And with, <laughs> with this... 
Boys in the Hood at the time when that movie came out, like I don't want to say it was maybe ninety two or whatever. Like I was I, I was too young to get in. Um and they were putting like guards at like movie theaters and stuff, and they were like, Oh man, there's gonna be a bunch of gang members going to see this movie or shootings or whatever. And I guess there actually was in LA at the time, so eh. Maybe they were justified. Right. But we snuck in and saw it somewhere along the line. And like, I remember this, this guy in particular. For, oh, you think you tough. Cause he uh, didn't, if you go back and watch so that movie, like tense stuff. Yeah. yeah. If you go back and watch the movie, he doesn't open his mouth or teeth when he's delivering the whole speech. So it's like, Oh, you think you tough. Oh yeah. That's really One of them scary. Crenshaw mafia motherfuckers. That's one really of them rolling scary. 60s. That's him. He was one of my faves. And when he died, because you always wonder as an actor, like when you die, what they're going to put up of your yeah. thing. It just said on, on TMZ, boys in the hood, dirty cop. Jesse Lawrence Ferguson dies. And they put the picture of him as the cop from oh, boys in the hood. And you're boy. like, but I went back and I looked hey. up his IMDb. That was his most like yeah. notable thing or whatever. Either way. He ended up on TMZ and people remembered, and that was one of my favorite characters. So fuck it, I love it. I'm amped. I'm gonna give uh, Jesse Lawrence Ferguson a shout out, and he was 76 years old, so it's not like it was crazy. It's not or, like he was fucking 80 or anything. Yeah, he died before. He's three, three. He died three years younger than Joe Biden, and mm-hmm. Joe Biden is still alive. He's just like freezing his face, trying to be like, I'm not old. Well, the average, what, what is it? The average life expectancy for a man is 76 years old. So like, yeah, you're there. You're right there. Biden, 79, man. He's past it. And so is Bernie. It's 78. Why does Bernie not seem the same kind of old? He does. He seems old and fucking crazy. He seems crazy, but he doesn't seem like it's hard for him to find words and to I'll, I'll tell you to what. stay on track it's because of his look so the way he looks his appearance wise he like looks like a crazy yeah, yeah crazy old grandfather so when he speaks and talks about things and the way in which he delivers his mm-hmm. lines and his, his mannerisms and all that stuff you accept it because of the way he looks and now joe biden is trying to young down and like dude i'm gonna be real unless people weren't talking about joe biden being 79 i don't think i would have known I would have said, I, w- I think I would have said 70. Maybe no. S- yeah. Mm-mm. 68 to 70, I would have said. Mm-mm. For sure. I, that, that's exactly what I would have said. Whereas with Bernie, it's, cra- it's crazy Bernie. And he's so, la- you know, the, yeah, it reminds me of a crazy grandfather. Like, I understand that one. Biden, he's younged himself down. And Hillary doesn't Everything he- seem as old as she is. What's that? Hillary doesn't seem as old as she is. How old, how old is she? talking. I think she's right around their same age, right? I don't know. I mean, they've they've all been tied she's... together for so long that uh, we'll just, I wanna... we'll just type in. I, we look at the internet. Jesse and Ross looking at the internet. Seventy one. Mm. Uh, she'll be actually she'll be seventy two this year. So okay. yeah, she's and they she's were where saying I thought that she was. she was old. She was where I thought she was. Well, they were saying she was old because of the problems she was having health wise. So. They were more focusing on health. And, and to be fair, I think they did it to Trump where they were asking to, to, to release the doctor's report, r- reports or whatever. Because Trump <coughs> is around that same. I want to say he's 71 too. Um, or older. It might be 72. 72. Okay. <clears throat> so look, but this is, we're, we're heading into the election or whatever. He'll be what, 76, 77 when he dies. You know? When? His, his, his life expectancy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, look. So, uh, when, when 76, 77, when the presidency ends, the next mm-hmm. one. So, that's, you know. Yeah, he, yeah. he dies toward the end of that at the, the right. you know, at the, the normal male expectancy. God, then you're like, all right, if cool. If fucking, if Biden goes, let, let's say, eight years. Whoo. I don't you're going to have to get him out towards he, the end. It's going to be like a Reagan situation. Like, you're going, your mind is going, bro. Like, he's you've got leading, to go. You know, he's leading right now. By a lot. Um, Not sure. And there was a shock poll done. I don't believe this poll. But again, the media, and it's dangerous to keep posting his fucking polls. They said Biden's up by eight over Trump, which don't buy that whatsoever. But let's say he does win, right? Let's say he wins that primary. You got a dude who's 79 years old who, who might be able to be president. 
Mm-mm. I wonder. I wonder if he would be eighty opening because it's the next year, right? Uh, I just think get a group of just just oh, fuck. He's seventy six. Just get a group of normal who by no, so he'll be seventy seven this year. I was incorrect. Bernie seventy seven. I I don't know where I get seventy nine from. Pelosi is seventy nine. Mm. That's why Pelosi seventy nine. So Biden is seventy six. He'll be seventy seven in November. So by the time, yeah, so no, that, that's correct. So by the time the, the presidency is announced, he'll be, he'll be 78 years old. Mm-hmm. So in 2020, at that time, he'll be 78 years old. So that's, that's pretty close. Mm-hmm. By the time he's sworn in, that's in January. I mean, you're looking at, you'll be right around, you'll be right around that 79 year. Mm-hmm. His first year of presidency, the first entire year, he'll be 79. Mm-hmm. Fuck me. That's and then cr- he'll be, and just like I said, just get a group. This will be a good thing for Trump. Just get a group of seventy-nine-year-olds. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like panel-wise, just normal seventy-nine, eighty-year-olds, right? Elizabeth Warren is sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. Yeah. Young buck. Yeah. She is ready to go. She seems older than all of them. <laughs> I know. Doesn't she just? <laughs> <laughs> She's at the the golden age though in life, you know. Yeah, she's 69. at her sexual prime. You know that 69. for women. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. She knows what she wants. She gets what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sexual prime, sixty nine. Oh, you know that? if you could see Jesse's facial reactions on the video show, it's worth its weight in <laughs> for, gold. Uh, right for now. Elizabeth. Elizabeth just a Warren. feeling. Just uh, <laughs> that's the feeling. It's not. It's not going to look like her or anything. But <laughs> I want to do your idea. By the way, you had a great idea off air. Oh, and I want to start incorporating that into the show if we can. Uh, and we'll look into this. We're by the way for everybody at home. We're getting a new studio and like a massive like media company and all this shit. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're, at, we're we're moving the sets and and heading into big offices with that. I'd like to get a an, a one eight hundred number put in so people yeah. could call in. Mm-hmm. You had an awesome idea about doing anonymous. Well, yeah, so it's a segment we must be in over overtime right now. You can do whatever you want. Um, so it's a segment I wanted. To, what <laughs> overtime? Yeah, oh, overtime. Are you, are you gonna put your song in? <laughs> you should. The people maybe want it. I know. After the last, maybe show. they don't want they it. They do. They do. We got a lot um, of comments that they loved it. Overtime. Overtime. Going into overtime. 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 Going into overtime. <laughs> so put it in. Put your song but anyway, in. Anyway, so I wanted to do a segment called Anonymom where, uh, you know, moms, when they've had a kid or two or whatever, you know, can accidentally get very wasted. Because our tolerance is way down. We yeah. can't really drink that much, whatever. So if we're able to, you kind of let us loose for a second. Accidentally, whether you take shots or whatever, you can get, I mean, wasted, wasted, mom wasted, right? Yeah. So the idea was kind of, you know, I have a friend out here that has a really funny story from Garden Party. I'm going to ask her to do it. Give me a, a voicemail of it. Okay. Garden Party is this very posh... Um, thing that we do in North Carolina every year when the azaleas bloom and it's like, but it really is a bunch of rich, you know, well-to-do ladies, Mm -hmm. moms that dress up, put on a little hat and they day drink Ah. starting at around 11 and it's bourbon and like tequila and things like this Sure, all day. So like our neighbors, you know, we have pictures of them kind of being brought home by their husbands asleep in the car, yeah. you know, in the nice dress and the hats all. I was whatever. unaware that it was bourbon. That's why I had this surprise response to that. The ladies are drinking bourbon. Oh, so the story I hope that I hope she gets on here is, you know, they first around 11, uh, it was a shot of bourbon and mm-hmm. then a shot of tequila somewhere after that. Cause there's all these booths and these things and everybody's day drinking. Right. So that was again at 11 o'clock. 
So she went through the whole day all the way until her mom picked her up from her friend's driveway Oof. at maybe midnight, 1, 1 a.m. That's a long day, though. And she had to drop a pin. She didn't know where she was. So it's a long day, but she is like, she's a, a mom that, ni- again, 90% of the time is a mom, sober mom with yeah, her four great. kids. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And so I don't know exactly how to do it. Let me know what you guys think or if you can. It'd be just cool to get voicemails. It would, yeah. Of a mom's, mom's mom wasted. Mom stories. wasted. And the idea is like. Guys, you guys can say that you get wasted all the time. I know. No one will look at you as like a bad father. It's no. like you were on a trip. You're on a fishing trip yeah. or whatever. Uh. And for moms, we have to not say our name. So it would be anonymous. Like you don't have to say who you are or names of anyone. It's the only way that we can truly tell our stories. I think it would be wasted I, I, stories. I, I, yeah, I think it would be hilarious. And you're right. Dads can get away with more. There was one dad at one of these functions that I went to, somebody's Christmas party or whatever, and they were like, "Hey man, can you drive?" Because we were we we'd come later or whatever. And mm-hmm. every, by the time we showed up, everybody was trashed. Yeah, and it was just like, "Oh, all right, we'll have two drinks and then bounce." Yeah. And he was like, "Hey man, can you drive?" I was like, "Yeah, cool." And he goes, "Awesome, man. I forgot my keys inside uh, the bar. I'll be right back." Right. And I was already in the driver's seat. You know, at this mm-hmm. point of our car. He had actually gone in. It wasn't his keys at all. He had actually gone in to grab a full double Jack and Coke sure. uh, in, the gla- in the actual bar glass. So mm-hmm. he took the glass from the bar itself out, oh, okay. out into the okay. vehicle. And okay. I was like, and then he put, he, cause the, the cup holder was in the middle. Yeah. And then he put that down there and I uh-huh. was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Uh, got, I still got to, I got to drive. And he goes, oh, man, what, do, what are you not cool? And I was like, no, 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 I don't care that you drink at all. Like, I'm super cool. Don't, yeah, don't, don't. I was like, but I can't drive. Like, it's going to get all over the car. I'm worried about get, getting all over the car. I don't care that you took the drink from the thing. You know? Sure, sure. We had a hearty chuckle, me and some of the other fathers that were in yeah. the back about this dude, right? Oh, God. And so you're right. As dads, I didn't, I didn't think of another. I didn't bat an eyelash. No, it wasn't like, oh, he's a bad dad. He doesn't take care of his family no. or whatever. Great dude. He's a great dude. Right. Um, And that's the beautiful thing about being a mom. I just didn't want it spilling in my car, Mm -hmm. man. Like, just hold on to your fucking glass. When guys have kids, when guys, yeah, when guys have kids, they're just a guy who has kids. Right. You don't necessarily (laughs) think of them as a dad, right? You have kids sometimes that you have to, like, deal with. (laughs) Moms, it's like as soon as you have a kid, you're a mom. Stamp. Like, there's no, it's not like. Yeah, there's no going You're a real person that has kids or this is who you are this time. You know, it's, you don't get to be anything else than that. (laughs) So, but we do have, like, funny stories and ridiculous shit and. Girls are disgusting, too. Talk shit about our kids and all these things, but we have to do it anonymously because you can't, you just can't go down like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And girls are disgusting too. So the stories you guys have. So disgusting. Or are probably worse than guys. Oh yeah. If you, if you really pinned it down. For sure. So. Girls bathrooms are uh, the worst. way grosser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of the bar, cleaning up the end of the bars the end of the night. I, like it was always a, I don't, I don't want to clean out the girls bathroom. Mm-mm. Every single time. It was just like, God Between damn it. Between puke, tampon, tampons. Tampons. Uh, everything else. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like, across the board. Mm-hmm. We were just like. Mm-hmm. It's a, it was a bloody shitty mess in there where you're just like, oh my they God. Save the shits. If, if guys. Because you're not going to do it at your boyfriend's house or whatever. So yeah. It's like shits are always saved it, for public bathrooms. And if you're at one of these bars and you saw what was going on in there, 90% of the dudes would not hit on any of these girls at the mm-hmm. bar whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, OT, James. Oh, her time. What's your little <laughs> song? You should play Overtime. your little song out of it. Overtime. <laughs> Going into overtime. <laughs> overtime. <laughs> I was just like laughing myself making that, you know. I look, the audience. Hopefully you guys like it. The audience loved it on the last show. It's um, just annoying enough for you. Yeah. And on the next one, we got, uh, it happened, by the way. Huh. Uh, we, don't, we don't do previews of next shows very often. Ooh, We're going to do it coming now. up. Coming up on a Thursday night's episode, usually they drop at 8 o'clock um, for the Friday drive. We got, uh, we got my boy here. Uh, Riz, where's Rizwan? Verk from the, high, the high Simulation Hypothesis. Really Holding cool. Holding that book up in the camera. Dude, 
awesome guy. Awesome interview. I was nervous. Yeah. I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. You did call me. You, you, t- you called me dumb. I did call you dumb. A lot. I, a little dummy. Um, a little dumb dumb. No, no, no. But we, we, because we had joked about it off air where it was just like, whoa, I can't oh, even I mean, get into a conversation like this. This guy is way too smart and to that, even be talking to you. To and, be that's, and that's what I said. Like, that's why I felt nervous. I don't. I don't feel nervous talking to very many people very often. I feel like I'm at least well read enough to understand everything that's going on. And like this, I read this guy's book. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I've known about the sim world. We've joked about it on the show for a, a long time. Um, not, we're well, not really joked, but kind of like, Hey, this yeah, could yeah. be real. Right. Yeah, yeah. But once you start talking to someone that smart, you're like, Oh no, I, there, there comes a point. Where you're like, he could just crush me mentally on some conversation that I would have no idea about. And then be like, just stop dead in the middle of the conversation and just say, you don't know anything, do you, dummy? Yeah, you little dummy. You little dummy. You don't know anything mm-hmm. I'm talking about. And you'd about. be like, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't know what crumple. you're talking about. Yeah. 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 And it's weird. Like, that's a weird power to have over someone, I think. I like it. Right. Because it's, look, it's the... But he was way the nice rise of and education. Cool he was and rad, not yeah. pretentious or con- condescending was awesome. in any way. He very he was he was cool. But when you're talking to an MIT scientist, you're sure. like, what am I? What am gonna? I? Yeah, you're nothing. I, I, exactly. You are nothing. That's what I felt like, and good, I felt like good, good. I felt like at any moment in the conversation, he, he could have just turned and said, "You don't know what I'm talking about, dummy." Yeah, and you'd be like, or or ask you to be like, <laughs> you understand what I was saying, right? Can you repeat it back to me? Tell that me kind about of thing the protest. Like, oh, you get like caught in yeah, yeah. school being like, ooh. But he was awesome. And uh, I can't believe it went down. We <laughs> I joked on air. I was like, I don't know if I'm famous enough to get him really on. really did not think he was going to do it, to be <laughs> honest. Just... And he did say that he listened to another episode, and I was like, ah. He liked the show. If you listen to one episode, you're not doing the show. He loved it. He loved the show. That scares me about everyone. We get someone on, just don't listen to it. Yeah. Don't listen to the show. <laughs> don't listen to me being a little dumb, dumb. It was great, man. So that, that, that one's going to be next. Um, and super, super stoked about it. So cool. So much fun. I, it's, it, it's one of the... Just interesting. He's really interesting But guy it's one of the biggest it's... joys I have hosting a podcast is you get to talk to people that never in a million years would I ever get to talk to this person, hang out with this person, no, nothing mm-hmm. like uh, that's why I do it. I'm super grateful to do this. I'm super grateful that everybody listens because I would never get to talk to people like this in a million years. Mm-mm. MIT scientists ever I'll tell you to fuck off. Yeah. It's not like we're running in the same circles, you know, it's not like I run into him in the, in the bathroom mm-hmm. on, you know, at in Myrtle beach being like, Hey, you got a key bump. Yeah. I got a, I gotta keep this thing going. You gotta keep up. Like I'll, I'll never run into him in real life, uh-huh. um, but on the show, absolutely. And that's why I think Rogan does it, because um, that was a very Rogan esque show to me, where you talk to somebody who's way outside of your mental capacity. <laughs> yeah, and you just try. You just you're just interested. Yeah, it's just the idea of being interested. Maybe not the you know super knowledgeable absolutely everything but just interested in everything i think the more and more you surround yourself with people like that or attempt to at least try to have conversations outside your comfort zone it makes you a better person so uh this was definitely one of them and uh i'm psyched for that episode to air Uh, i'll be curious as to people's thoughts on it yeah it was really good uh this was fun Jabes. yeah don't turn 80 around jesse wiseman though Uh, she will let you know about it I can't wait to see that little that that uh, census or that um, control group. What do they do? What's the thing? Focus group. Focus group. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> That's how they're gonna be. You never have to worry about me turning eighty. That'll never happen. Yeah, me neither. Year. I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> you might. I, th- I. I think you might not live with me for sure. Yeah. I'm super healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables. I am Ross Patterson. I'll be dying before 76. Good night, everyone. Good night.